Now we'll demonstrate the knockless test. Now this is a test that's primarily designed to test sacroiliac joint dysfunction. Starting with the patient prone, uh, before starting you want to make sure that the patient has no problems with their knees because it will involve end range knee flexion. Lindsay, are the knees okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great. So on the symptomatic side, you'd passively bring the knee into flexion, taking the heel all the way down to the buttock. If there were pain in the SI joint region, this would be a positive test. One thing to note is that, you know, you might also see some quad tension or there could be L2-3 nerve root or disc involvement in some cases. But this is primarily designed to test that sacroiliac joint. Now I'll demonstrate the distraction test. This is basically an SI joint confirmation test. If we've examined Lindsay and we suspect there's a problem, it's one more test we can use to make sure that our diagnosis is correct. So in this test, we're going to push posteriorly or in a dorsal direction, but also laterally. So finding the ASIS landmarks here, the anterior superior iliac spines of the pelvis, you're going to cross your hands, and this will help with the line of drive this way. And you're just putting a gentle uniform pressure downwards and slightly lateral. And if there's a positive pain response on the symptomatic side, it's confirming that there's a problem with that sacroiliac joint. The next test is the hamstring length test. Now a key part to this is before you start, you're gonna have the patient push their low back into the treatment table. So can you push, there you go, perfect. So by doing that, we're gonna limit any involvement of the pelvis and low back so we get a true measure of hamstring length. You're gonna test both sides. You always want to compare both sides. So starting out, it's, it's a straight leg. A normal range would be about 80 to 90 degrees. Okay. So you're gonna note for any pain, any tension. You're gonna compare left and right. One thing to note is by doing that comparison, what you're looking for is, is there symmetry? Perhaps there's an imbalance, and patients really aren't aware of imbalances a lot of the time. If you notice that one side is much shorter than the other, that short side could place a lot of stress on the pelvis and joints in that region. And the patient would only be utilizing a small range of motion, which could predispose them to osteoarthritic changes. In some cases, it's sport specific. If you have a sprinter that needs a lot of recoil and elasticity, but strength, you may find that there is some tension versus say a dancer who actually will have a larger range, but symmetry is truly important in that dancer. So it's a more important test than a lot of people give it credit for. Change is gonna 